Thank you for the opportunity to provide my thoughts on the Canada Training Credit. For those of you who do not know us, the Canada West Foundation is a nonpartisan independent think tank based in Calgary. We work on issues of interest to the West and by extension all of Canada. My work in the Human Capital Centre is devoted lately to skills development and the competency-based approach to workforce development and deployment. I believe that the Canada Training Credit is a good idea in principle. As technology, work processes and global influences causes job, cause jobs to change, people who are already in the workforce will be under increasing pressure to upgrade their skills or reskill altogether if they wish to remain employed. The credit is a terrific incentive for people to do so. However, I am not convinced that the credit as described in Budget 2019 will achieve the goal of helping Canadian workers be better prepared for the changing workforce. I have four reasons for this. Reason one, the amount is too small. The credit is $250 per year to offset up to half of eligible tuition expenses, yet tuition for both credit and non-credit courses at eligible post-secondary institutions run in the range of $400 to $800 per course. At $250 a year, it could take 20 years in the workforce to be eligible for coverage for one diploma, or for half of the cost of a diploma. Reskilling and upskilling are likely to be important and needed up sooner than that. The very people who will need to reskill the most, those in lower skilled, lower paid jobs that are most likely to disappear or to be disrupted by technological change, will be the least able to afford to reskill through this credit. Budget documents indicate that the government expects that this program will be used by only a small percentage of the population. While the truth is that technological change is disrupting, disrupting work processes and as much as 50% of the workforce may need to either upgrade their skills or reskill altogether in the next few years. My reason two, the credit for tuition paid to eligible institutions, sorry, the credit is for tuition paid to eligible institutions and these providers are not able to offer much of the training that is needed. Full programs at eligible institutions are expensive, but more to the point, they may not be what people need. Much as the supply chain has moved to just-in-time delivery of goods, the workforce needs to move to just-in-time delivery of the skills, knowledge, and attributes, known as competencies, required to complete the various tasks of ever-changing jobs. The vast majority of eligible institutions offer, for the most part, courses and programs that are semester-based or offered one time per week over a period of weeks. And they may not be offered when people who are working full-time can be available for classes. In many cases, the best solutions to workplace needs are short, online courses available 24-7, targeted to filling gaps in specific competencies. They are offered through private online training providers. Recognized post-secondary institutions and training providers must quickly find ways to better duplicate this kind of training, or these private training providers need to be assessed for their eligibility as providers for this credit. For many education and training providers, the problem is getting a handle on exactly which competencies are needed, which brings me to my reason three. Canada needs better labour market information. To get it, employers need tools to help them articulate the competencies they require currently and into the future. And individuals need better access to information about which competencies they will need to have, which they already have, which gaps, the competency gaps they need to fill, and the fastest, most efficient ways to fill them. And education and training providers need this education. I say now in my notes, but I think I mean yesterday. Canada does not yet have these kinds of tools known as competency frameworks. We need to build them quickly. We need to take the time to work with employers across this country to help them define the tasks of their jobs, especially the new jobs they're creating, and the competencies needed to perform those tasks well. Meanwhile, industry associations, human resources professionals, and career developers should be encouraged to upgrade their own knowledge about competencies and help the people they serve to dig more deep, deeply into what exactly it is that they need to learn. My last reason for thinking that the Canada Training Credit may not succeed is that too many people lack the skills to learn. More than 40% of the workforce has poor literacy and numeracy skills. These skills are at the heart of all learning 
and good levels of these are needed for efficient building of advanced cognitive and technical skills. People who have been in low-skilled, low-paid jobs for a long time are the most likely to have lost some of their basic cognitive skills since they left school, and they are most in need of learning new technical skills. They should be encouraged to upgrade their learning to learn skills prior to investing in new technical training, and their Canada training credit should be eligible for this upgrading too. That ends my presentation, Mr. Chairman. However, I'm more than happy to answer any questions from the committee. Thank